Well, welcome to today's webinar, Transform Your Executive and Assistant Partnership. Woo, I'm so excited about today's topic. It is near and dear to my heart. So come in, say hello, tell us where you are watching from. Um, this is our second webinar that we are hosting in celebration of you during the month of April. On Thursday, this Thursday, I'm going to be hosting a Q&A, and that's going to be via Zoom. So if you haven't signed up for that one yet, um, please do, and it would be your opportunity to ask me any questions that you would like about the profession or your career or my experiences. So I hope you will join me. You can find out more about that event on Office Dynamics website, where we have a calendar of events for all of April just for you. So I'm not going to uh, waste a lot of time here because, I, again, I have a lot of content and material to cover with you today. So I hope you're all ears today. This is, uh, like I said, a really important topic and near and dear to my heart. So. I have a special announcement and I'm not going to hold off on it because it is going to be incorporated into my talking points today. We are so excited and I am so excited to release the second edition of our executives and assistants working in partnership guide. So if you do not know about this guide, I wrote the first guide in 2015 after about 25 years of coaching executives and assistants. And executives kept asking, don't you have an operating guide that will teach me and my assistant how to work together, how to uh, operate on a day-to-day -day basis to be really effective? So I did write one in 2015, and that was very successful. And um, many executives and assistants have been using that. But as you can imagine, things have changed over the last four years. And so it was time for me to update that original guide. Now, if you have the original, you still may want to invest in this one because this is based around today's business environment, our world, the changes we have experienced. Um, it addresses the hybrid environments or if you're working remotely. And just a gold mine of information. So today I'm going to use some of the information in the guide for my talking points. And we're also going to give away three guides plus some of these other fabulous gifts we have for you. So stay with me. Uh, first, I do have a question though. We did encourage you to invite your leader to attend this webinar because we're talking about a partnership and that usually involves your leader or manager. So I just want to do a, I want to take a quick poll so I know my audience and I want to know, are there any managers, uh, leaders or executives attending today? So did the poll launch? Because I haven't done a poll in a long time. Are you ready? Okay. Do we have any executives with us today? And I hope we have a few. Okay. <laughs> well, gee, for, for those of you or the one person who's joining us today, I appreciate you because you obviously value your partnership with your assistant. Uh, for the rest of you, where are your leaders? Okay, I'm going to end the poll. <laughs> We're going to move on. That's the hard part in building the partnership. The second part of the partnership doesn't show up. So we're going to have to work on that over the next several months. So I want to give you some background information as to why this topic is so near and dear to my heart. Um, as many of you know, or you may not know, I worked in the administrative profession for 20 years prior to starting Office Dynamics. 
And during that 20 year time, I worked in 12 different companies in five states. I worked in a variety of industries. I worked with all types of managers, executives, CEOs. So I had a wealth of experience in um, the different dynamics that I would have with those people I supported. And as a result of that experience, I had realized and developed the three stages of growth for executives and their assistants. Uh, and also, by the way, when I say executives, I really mean any person who you directly report to. So whether they're called a manager, a supervisor, that's who I'm speaking about. Anyways, the three stages were you start out as a team, you know, when you, you first get together, you're getting to know each other and trying to accomplish your responsibilities. Then that should evolve into a partnership where you're working in sync and you're understanding each other better and for the assistant where you can think, you know, ahead and be a few steps ahead of your executive. The third level is what I call the strategic partnership level. And you've heard me talk about this in the past. That is the most powerful, most rewarding level. But it does take work getting to that partnership level. And also, there are things involved such as chemistry and shared values. So out of my 12 people that I reported to, or maybe more, in the various companies, there were three executives who I had a strategic partnership with. So I truly know from that side of the desk what it takes, um, and I value that. Then when I started Office Dynamics, my experiences have been from the other side of the desk. As an executive, I've had assistants uh, over the years, many over 34 years. Malia has been with me almost seven years now. Is it seven, Malia? Oh my gosh, or eight, are we on eight? <laughs> and so I know what it takes as a leader to build that partnership, but I also know what we see as executives and what we don't see in the people who are supporting us. And the other side of that coin is that I have coached 300 plus executive and assistant teams over 33, 34 years, sorry. Um, and so I have observed a lot. And often when I do that coaching, I go on site and I spend two days with the executive and assistant and I watch every single thing they do. We dig into every process. I listen to every piece of their communication. So we go very deep to uncover what other barriers are standing in their way of truly having that partnership and, and a good one. So that's what I bring to you today. That's the value that I bring you. It's from all those perspectives and I'm excited to share um, my ideas with you and share the magic with you. So um, what I had unraveled after coaching all those teams is that there is a magic formula. The formula is people plus processes. That's what equals success. Now you might say, well, sure, people, uh, yeah, of course, there's the people side of our relationship. Of course, there's the process side. I'm taking you deep today because there are a lot of assistants and executives, they, they get along and they have pretty good processes, but they're not doing as good as they could do and reaping those rewards. And yes, I saw a comment about technology and we're going to address that. Because even though we're in a digital world, there are certain behaviors and best practices that never change, regardless of the technology you use. So we'll talk about that as well, but it's also enhanced, you know, your ability to be more efficient, correct? So when you understand what I'm going to briefly share with you today, we only have an hour. Again, I spend days with executives and assistants. 
Um, but when you understand at least the core of the process and implement it and execute it, now the hard part is you need your leaders to buy into this as well. But when you do, here's what you're going to discover. You're going to have less stress and more success. And that is experienced on both the executive side and the assistant side. Who wouldn't like less stress as an assistant, right? So what happens is you learn certain strategies that help minimize tension or minimize your doubts. Maybe you think you're clear on what your executive needs. And then they tell you, no, that isn't really what I want. And now that's stressful for you. Or maybe you're disappointed you're not getting complimented on your work and what you have done and the effort you have put in. Or maybe you have an awesome relationship. How many of you would say you have an awesome relationship? If it's yes, put a Y in the chat. Even if you have an awesome relationship, you're, you should always be growing and learning. Um, because things change and our relationships change and work changes. A second benefit, you will definitely have enhanced communication. But you have to follow my advice. Like seriously. And I don't mean just again, oh yeah, we talk, we email each other, we text each other. I'm going to get into that later, okay? Also, you'll work more collaboratively. Teamwork, oh, yay, I'm so excited. Many of you have a great relationship. Good. So if you do today, I want you to just look for those little gems that I'm going to share that might help take that to the next level and bring you even greater satisfaction. Um, so collaboration. Collaboration is different than teamwork. Uh, with collaboration really quick, um, any either party could take the lead, either the executive or the assistant. You're working through the processes together. You're working through the scenarios of your workday together. You're, you're really collaborating. You're helping that uh, things evolve. Um, in collaboration, there is no rule book. You're figuring it out together as you go along with each of you bringing your gifts to the table. Um, the third benefit is time management mastery. Now, if you've been to any of my recent courses over the past two years, I do not really like the term time management, and we haven't used that for a long time in our trainings. The only reason why I would use it is because that's what most people relate to. But what they don't understand, it's not about time management. It's managing yourself, your projects, your priorities. It's managing um, your energy, your mental energy, your physical energy. That's what we're teaching. That's the new way today. So if you're hung up on the old time management tips, get away from it because they're probably not working so well anymore. Uh, let's go to your next benefit for you, increased efficiency and effectiveness. So this has been a, a huge area, you know, to openly share with you over the past year where I have been called in to virtually teach or in person and work with assistance on increasing efficiency and effectiveness. And a lot of that's due to, I mean, just think about the volumes of information that you have to deal with on a daily basis. Many assistants are juggling uh, or managing more or supporting more than one person, five, six, seven people, eight. And then we have the pace of change, which has greatly intensified. So, you know, it's, it's really critical that you focus on being results driven, not task driven. If all you're worried about is checking things off your, your task list, that is not the way we approach things today. It's about looking at what are the results you need to accomplish 
today and this week. You're looking at the end. And this is something else we've been teaching this past uh, over the past year. Um, and then another benefit to you, this is one of my favorite, is building rapport with the person you support. I always believed it from day one when I went into the workplace right out of high school that I needed to like where I was working and I needed to like the person I was supporting to have a good relationship because I spent 40 hours a week or more at work. So that relationship was always important to me. And as I said, it wasn't that I had any horrible executives, thankfully, but there were certain executives that I had even more uh, rapport with, who I really felt we were working in partnership as we were uh, going through our work day. Now, this is harder if you are remote. If you're working remote or even you go in two days a week, yes, you can have the rapport, but you're going to have to work at it when you're not together in the office. And I don't know, maybe you work in uh, New York and your executive is in California. OK, then that's going to be more difficult. It just means you have to work a little harder at building the rapport. All right, let me get into it. I already talked about the terminology. Um, we're going to dig in because our time is limited. So the first part I want to start with is the people side. So and that's how the guide is broken out. The part one of the guide is the people side. So we talk about, you know, the relationship. And I'm going to I'm going to get into specifics in just one moment. Then in part two of the guide, we dig into the processes, which I also want to cover eight of the 10 with you today or not eight of the 10. Wait a minute. Wrong. Four of the 10. I can't cover eight of the 10. <laughs> So um, anyways, let's talk about the people side. And again, just thinking, you know, about my own experiences uh, and having that great relationship and that synergy with each other is so important and it involves a lot. So let's go through a couple ideas. First of all, on the people side, we talk about number one frequent and clear communication frequent and clear communication so what i'd like you to do as i go through these points i want you to make notes as to where can you do better which of these and i know all of you can because this is what i teach and this is what i'm being asked to teach so a couple ideas uh, and I do know the hard part sometimes is getting your leader to support this effort. So it isn't all about you. I know for some of you, you struggle in getting your executives to communicate with you. Now, communication, that's broad. So I'm going to list some of these specifics for you. First of all, it has to do with the frequency of your communication. Now, I also want to clarify, it's also the content or context. So I don't mean just communicate more with each other, email each other more, text more, okay? If it's not valuable information, then no, don't do it. But you do need to have frequency. Malia and I, 90% of the time, have a morning huddle. Sometimes it's two minutes. I'll just, you know, say, hey, is there anything that's gone on since last night? Or I want to update her because a lot of times I'm work, I still might work at night or I'll check my emails. Um, or early morning, I scroll through emails right away to see if there's anything important. And maybe things have changed. And I want her to know about that early in the day, not late in the day. It also gives Malia a chance to also, you know, confirm with me. So frequency. The next piece of communication are the sources. So I'm going to just read this from the guide. It's just easier. 
So uh, in the guide, it's on page 19. Communication sources have exploded in number. Email, instant messaging, texting, internet, mobile phones, landlines, wearable technology, video conferences, social media, smart speakers, collaborative documents, chatbots, blogs, shared calendars, uh, forums, vlogs, live chats, and video chatting. What this means is communication sources are A, overly complex, and B, they're constantly evolving. So it's vital for assistants and executives to be on the same page with their communications, uh, sources, or modes. However, with that said, I'll just tell you from my in-person coaching, I can tell you that those sources aren't always the most effective. So that leads to the second point that we cover in the guide is email. And you've heard me say this, if you've been around, email is not always the best medium, nor is texting. These are things I witness. I'm not making this stuff up, people. This is real. And so what happens is people waste a lot of time, executives and assistants, and because maybe they're texting, they're not getting clarification. That slows you down. Or an assistant goes off in the wrong direction because she thought she understood or he understood what their executive said, but it isn't. So I'm not going to, I'm not spending the whole webinar on this. I'm just pointing out the things you need to consider if you want to really have a strategic partnership that is ever evolving. This isn't something you achieve and you're done. Okay. Uh, third, we're still under. So first of all, people side, I'm under the communication umbrella but I have six points for you. The third, well, I just covered that. Really knowing when you need to email or text. Now, some assistants will tell me, well, they won't tell me to my face, but they'll write it or they'll put it in a chat or on our social media that I'm antiquated. I'm sorry, I'm really not. I do know what's going on. And I talk to CEOs and executives and leaders, and I'm hired as an expert because I do know what I'm talking about. And I would say to those people, you better get up to speed because that isn't true. And you can just do your research. Don't even ask me, go ask AI. But I am standing up for that because I know deep down that's the truth. So that's my two cents. Um, next. Clarity, when you're communicating with each other uh, for your benefit, be as clear as you can in what you need and in your expectations, because the clearer you are with your executive and what you want or you need, even in the way of their support, the better able they can support you. I know a lot of assistants tell me that they get frustrated because they don't get answers from their executives. They'll say, well, I sent an email and I, I have five points in there and my executive responded to one. Have you ever experienced that? Um, right? So you've been clear, you've requested what you wanted. So what happens when you don't get what you want? Maybe that is then when you would have to text or you would request a five minute um, virtual meeting if you're not together in the same place, or if you're in the same place, you know, get face to face with them um, or FaceTime, okay? So I know you have a lot of challenges supporting these people, I really do. And I, I honor you and I admire you for all that you do. Um, the next one under communication details. Um, in other words, if we're going to have, we need clear communication, but for effective communication, providing details to each other. And uh, what happens often is your, your leaders, the people you support, 
they're so busy. They don't think to give you the details. Um, and it's not intentional. It's not that they maybe don't want to, they're just busy and they don't think of the details. So that's where you could be of value, not only to them, but to get more of what you want so you can get your job done. So you see, when you help them, you actually help yourself. The other piece of that has to do with communication styles. If you've attended any of those courses with us, uh, I am a big picture communicator. Um, now you might say, well, you've got to be detailed. I am detailed. If I have to write a hundred page book or I have to write a 12 part, 12 day training course, of course I get to the details, but initially I'm big picture. I'm um, conceptual. And so where Malia brings, I try to think of the details, but Malia brings me great value because she is a detailed thinker and she'll ask me those questions and clarify. And did you think of that? And what if we did this? And, and I love it. I love it. I love it. So she makes my life easier and I make her life easier because I'm giving her answers so she can move forward on her, her work. So does that make sense? Um, I hope. And then two-way communication. So in the guide, in the people part, we say two-way communication requires active participation on both sides. But what we're talking about is listening as well as speaking. And so you need to listen not only with your ears, but first and foremost, we know we're listening if we're doing it with our brain. Hearing is our ears, listening is with our brain. We're listening to understand, we're listening uh, to get inside someone's head, to understand their perspectives, okay? We've got to listen with our eyes. When you're an assistant, you have to listen with your eyes. And that's difficult if you're in two different physical locations. Um, you've got a sense, you listen for the aura when Malia comes into my office, or I know there's days sometimes where I come in and, you know, something's been going on, um, like even just well, a week and a half ago with my, my eye that I had an issue with. And she could sense right away, she was listening to me and my aura when I came in and therefore she knew. So do you see, this is how you transform your partnerships, whether it's with the person you're supporting now or in the future. All right, so we're still under the people side. Um, for the people side, both parties must be involved. Your executives, your leaders, the people you support must be involved. And, and I don't know. I mean, we tried to get them to this webinar today. So I could tell them that. And um, so thank you again to the, the managers who are here. You are involved. That's one way you're showing your involvement. Uh, there is no magic. And so in the guide, which this is for executives and the assistants, I tell them there is no magic. As an executive, as a manager, as a leader, you have to be involved in building this partnership. You have to communicate with your assistant. You have to give your assistant context around information. So if we don't have time today, but if your person, the people you support aren't involved, the homework for you is to figure out how can you get them engaged? How can you get them to want to do this with you, the things that I'm talking about today. Um, another part within this section, it's about being in agreement. So this one is critically important. This is the biggest obstacle for executives and assistants. I hear it, I see it all the time. I'm in the midst of it right now with some uh, coaching work I'm doing. So what do I mean being in agreement? And I have almost three pages on that in the guide. So things like you need to commit 
to wanting a partnership? You know, are you in agreement on that? There are some executives or managers I know. No, they don't want to have a strategic partnership. They want someone who comes in and gets the job done and that's it. You've got to be clear on your roles, each partner's role. And that doesn't mean, oh, you're the leader and I'm the assistant. No, your role is maybe to filter, to listen, protect, organize, solve. A leader's role, a good executive, their role is to advise, coach, guide, inform, inspire their assistant, mentor their assistant. Do you see that's what I'm talking about? Also perceptions um, about or discussing uh, your advantageous behaviors, discussing your pet peeves, their pet peeves. Are you aligned? Do you leverage each other's talents and strengths? Um, and then another piece in here that is actually one of the most critical, you have to have exceptional levels of trust. And when I talk about trust with leaders, it isn't trusting so much with confidential information. Their biggest concern is trusting the work is getting done. And you're, the challenge today is because you are dumping your tasks and to-do lists in all these different places. And if the executive can't see that and you don't have daily huddles, they're worried. They're wondering. Or is that being done? Was that handled? What stage uh, are we at in this process? So do you see those are the things that will erode trust? And uh, you've got to trust them as well, right? You have to trust that they're going to be uh, value you. And you have to trust that they're going to guide you and trust that they're going to have your back. How about that one? You know, right? Do they show up for you like you do for them? The other big piece under here is expectations that's the biggest area and perceptions of expectations and this is why you have to communicate with each other you transform a partnership through the regular dialogue and feedback about processes and the work that is being done and so this is again when i'm called in uh, where I'm hearing, here's what the leader is expecting. The assistant believes they're delivering that and they're not in the way the executive would like. And so those little things create barriers. I call it hidden communication. What are the things you don't say to each other that are holding you back from being more successful and less stressed? Uh, executives. So for example, assistants will say to me, well, my executive really abuses my personal time there. They email me and text me at night or email me and expect me to respond and get things done even over the weekend. Well, come to find out this assistant, the executive didn't want her to do things over the weekend. They just needed to get this information out. She chose to take action. Therefore, she created the problem. And then in the future, the executive expected that. So you got to think about while you're being great and assisting, are you creating the monster yourself that ultimately leads to stress for you? All right, I'm going to keep going. Thank you, Herminia. Yes. I will say my advice is priceless. You can't put a dollar on my advice of 53 years experience, but I'm giving it to you for free today <laughs> and all this month because I want to help you. Okay, let's go on. Um, I'm still in the people side. So in case you're joining, number one under people. So you have the people side chapter. What I focused on Frequent, number one, frequent and clear communication, but I had six sub points. Number two, 
Both parties have to be in, involved. That's the tricky part. Getting your leader to be involved with you on all these things I'm talking about. Number three had to do with being in agreement, but there were several pieces. The, uh, agreement with your roles, your relationship, being in agreement about the processes that you're going to use, trusting each other. Number four, what I, I teach and what's in here and I talk about to executives and for you, this is an ongoing process. Like I said, you might have a great relationship. I had great, I told you three outstanding relationships. We never stopped evolving and improving and streamlining. Malia and I do the same thing. We're, we're always trying to talk and tweak and the new scenarios come up because just think about it. Business changes rapidly, rapidly. Our lives change. Our personal lives change. And what's going on in our personal life could affect how we are at work, right? How we show up at work. Our world itself is changing. Our communities are changing. Economics are changing. So you can't assume that you know how you operate today is it and that's it it isn't it and again that's why i came up with a second edition because things evolved things have changed over the past four years so there's a lot of core best practices like i said that never go away but you've got to add to that all right we're almost going to get to our giveaways um, also within this little piece, I, I wanted to tell you, uh, I think maybe you've heard of the stop, start and do more often, um, kind of activity. We do this in our star achievement course in our third module, which is all about the relationship with your executive early in the day. I ask every person in that room to give me one thing you would like your executive to either stop doing, it's making you crazy or to start doing or do more often. And we get every one of those that are up on flip charts in, in our room. And then later in the day, when we go through an activity on giving constructive feedback to your executive, we pull those and they write scripts around that and practice and role play. So thinking about what would you maybe like your executive to stop doing because it's bring, uh, slowing you down, or it could, it could be with other people. You know, maybe they're not being the best role model within the organization and you need to say something. So it isn't maybe just about your partnership, but maybe you see things going on too with others in your department. What do they, or maybe what do you want them to start doing? Maybe after this webinar today, you'll think of a few ideas, or what would you like them to do more often? So when they do something you like, tell them you like it because it's just like a little kid. We have to tell little kids what we like, what they do well, so they keep doing that behavior. All right. Oh, my God. I've got to get going because I was supposed to be done by now. So anyway, but I'm not. Let's give away one of our ENA guides. And I'm going to tell you more about the guide, but it's 100 pages of packed information. So who are we going to give the second edition to, the new edition? The new edition is going to go to Tabitha Banks. Yay, Tabitha. Now, remember, when you get this, Tabitha, you can read it, but you've got to get your leader involved in doing this with you because there's also conversation points in the guide for you to, to, to customize your processes. Okay, part two, let's go on to part two, which is processes, okay? Um, this is 80% of the content. So your relationship is important. You also have to have your processes down pat. The processes we view as the uh, tactical part of your job, however, you have to be a strategic thinker 
in each of these, otherwise you're just a robot and I can replace you. Get that? You cannot be robotic. You need to really think about each of these pieces. And, and I love this because this is where you are being challenged today. Executives are being challenged because you have all the technology. Now we have AI and oh, we could just dump all this in and we don't have to think. And we could just use all these calendar tools and I don't even have to be involved in calendaring. No, no, no. All right, so I wanna focus on four out of the 10 chapters. I picked out what I think are the, you know, some of the most critical pieces I wanna share with you. And so the first one, and I can pull this up on a slide, but I, I also don't want Webinar Jam to freeze on me. And um, so this is a visual and it's chapter one, and that's about you should be the information flow manager. And that's not happening. A lot of executives and managers and even individual contributors are independent today. They're tech savvy. They're doing everything on their own. I'll do my own meetings. I'll schedule this. I'll do my own trip. I'll do that. I'll handle um, you know, this uh, project. And no, this is what I keep saying. Everything should get funneled through you so you're aware of what is going on so you can be proactive so you can take the initiative so you are in the loop and don't get embarrassed because you don't know what's going on you know how many times has that happened to you then you either personally handle it you put it in document retention you delegate it you put it in your follow-up you add it to the calendar you see it should funnel through you um, but you have to believe this. That's where it starts. If you don't believe you should be the funnel and eh, they can do it, I don't need to be bothered, I'm too busy, that's the wrong attitude. And you'll hurt yourself in the long run because you aren't in the loop. That was the number one thing when I was an assistant that was so great. Everything crossed my desk first. So I was aware, okay? Um, number two, the second chapter uh, in here is really important. It's about touch bases, but what we cover, um, and you've seen this in other, if you have followed me or you've attended any of my training, you know we've talked about this before, but it's your reoccurring meetings with each other. So whether you want to call it a touch base, you want to call it a one-on-one, -on -one, the idea is um, what I want to most talk about today is why you need verbal touch bases is to confirm and align priorities, the A priorities, or do they need to go to a B or they need to go to a C? Like I said, we are moving so fast. You don't want to waste your time on the wrong things and your executives don't want you working on the wrong things or not that they're wrong. They're not timely. So, you know, if you've ever seen that matrix about urgent and important or not important, but urgent, you know, that's a whole other thing. Okay. So why I highly recommend this is, again, like I said, to confirm. Because what happened when you left work yesterday at five o'clock and now what you think are today's priorities, they could have changed overnight. And so you wanna confirm that touch base. Some of you will say, I've heard some assistants say, uh, when their executives come in, they'll say, okay, what are the fires I need to help you put out today? What are the top three things we need to, to take care of today or to handle or to manage? And again, there's all kinds of verbiage and I can't go into that today. Um, within the touch bases, you want more pieces of the puzzle. Executives tend to throw you a few pieces here and there of information, correct? How many people are you supporting that? They give you a piece here, they give you a piece there, and then oh, tomorrow they'll give you another piece. Your job to make your life easier, get more pieces of the puzzle. You know, upfront, the details, the context, 
around something, uh, which I'm going to tie into the next piece. Calendaring is a really critical chapter in the guide, but it's also something I constantly talk to executives about. And I know as an assistant, you're constantly dealing with calendars. I know in our office, it's ridiculous anymore. I think my calendar is all set for the week and forget it. It's changing several times throughout a day. So therefore you've got to confirm, but what I want to tell you most about your calendaring, let me get to that. Um, we call it strategic calendar administration. So this, it's absolutely essential that you manage and control the calendar. It's essential that you look at the calendar from a holistic perspective. What does holistic mean? It means you're looking at, you know, what went on last week, what's going on this week, and then what's going on three weeks from now. You just don't drop people into dates or times because they're open. I always say just because I have an open time, it does not mean I'm available. Now, the culprits are your leaders, the people you support, because they'll just fill up their calendar. Well, that's not a good idea either. There is such a thing as Zoom fatigue. Uh, yesterday, I know I had several you know, stressful, high, um, high level thinking meetings, and then I had another one last night. I get drained. So I want to be effective. So do your leaders. So help them. And I know I've got to keep going because it's getting close and I'm going to have to um, get to Q&A. But here are some additional tips I want to share with you. So first of all, the guide has all of this, right? But here are tips I'm going to give you today. Remember to allow buffer time for the people whose calendars you assist with, because they won't do it. And protect them, because they'll give it away so easily. And then, and then as a leader or executive, I get mad at myself for doing that, because I should have known better. Uh, another tip I have here is, oh, think about scheduling 20 minutes for a call instead of defaulting to 30. I know a lot of assistants will do this, or if they're in-person meetings, they'll do 50 minutes, not 60. So again, that's another way to build in wiggle room. If any of you have tips on how you do that, please put that in the chat. Another one, well, I think this is a preference for a lot of executives, but they can't always do it, is to not have a heavy Monday calendar. You know, if they're typically Monday to Friday, they've got to maybe get back in their groove a little bit or when they just come back from vacation. Um, I know I was on vacation for a week and then I came back and that Monday I had to have my eye uh, worked on and then I came in Tuesday and oh my gosh, I was so overwhelmed. And some of it you can't help, right? You have to schedule things, but if you can, I'm just saying if. The other thing with calendaring, you know, do you know every little nuance of what your executive prefers and likes and they don't like? And they probably aren't telling you because they often will tell me. It's the little nuances. Today, if you're looking for one big secret, it's not one big secret. It's a hundred. And it's doing each of those. And that, that's where you're going to really go to that next level and again, may improve the quality of your work life. Okay, I gotta keep going. I know, I know, I know. Okay, meetings, what do I wanna say about meetings? Uh, we have a whole chapter on meetings and we've addressed some things that you probably have not thought much about. So let me hop to it. This is what I built out this, this time in the guide and I used to have this years ago, but the three stages of meetings, I have an entire checklist. Meeting preparation and implementation, a lot of you are good at that. Meeting proper is that when the meeting is actually occurring, what most of you forget and 95% of executives forget is your post-meeting stage. When do you debrief? 
about yesterday's meetings with your executives. That's the time you should be debriefing, not waiting five days, debrief. And what were the most important things that happened in those meetings? What are the action items? What are the follow-ups? Uh, what are the net, you know, are there deadlines on there? What? So that's why you do it. So um, I want to encourage you to do more of that with your, uh, the people you support. And then also in preparing your executives, a lot of executives today do want you to be involved in um, whether it's in person or virtual, make sure they have every bit of information they need about that particular meeting, because I know what happens for us. Malia might book something a month ago for me with someone who's uh, new or um, another business colleague. And then it comes up and I'm like, well, who was that? What was that about? But Malia's great. She now types up everything, not only will maybe put it on the calendar, but what I love, she types that all for me and will give it to me because I also like to make some of my own notes and then I can easily pull that up and, and look at everything. Now, yeah, you can do digital. Like I said, I like the hard copy because then I often branch off and make notes and such. All right, I know I've got to stop. So let's get to it because I'm trying to stay on schedule today. We're going to do some more giveaways really quick. Um, so let's just do that right now, Malia. We have two more ENA guides. If you can stay on, please stay on because I have an exciting announcement. I got to tell you in one, one second. Um, and then we got to get Q&A in, Malia. I'm always racing, aren't I? OK, two, two ENA guides. Who are they going to? Two more guides, Maureen Elroy and Melissa Hickman. All right, congratulations. Did I ever do any of the other gifts? No, I was just going to oh, say yeah. you didn't do. <laughs> we have four gifts to give away. Okay, let's go quick. <laughs> I'm sorry, we got to rush. These okay. are going to be picked out. Okay. <laughs> Who's this for? That's going to go to Munda, M-U-N-D-A, Munda Raposa. All right, congratulations. I can't talk about them today, but they're awesome. Malia picked all these out. <laughs> Journals, bracelets, pens. This one's going this to for? Deanna Zittel. Okay, congratulations to you. Oh, this one we got a great, wonderful <laughs> mug. Thank you for being awesome to go in with our awesome theme. Okay. And a journal or something. <laughs> yes, it's a notepad. Um, Wendy Sir, Serville, Serville. Congratulations. Oh, sorry. Oh my gosh. And oh, last but not least. This is the little I got this packet. Yes. With post-its and a notepad and a beautiful pen. That's going to Patty Camilli. Okay, congratulations. <laughs> all right. And don't worry, y'all. I'll be reaching out to all of yeah. you after the webinar's over. You'll get an email from me. I know so, we'll do that quickly. <laughs> in case you have to run off really quick, um, we have a discount code. Our gift to you today is we're releasing the guide. It's hot off the press. So I need to give you a 20% discount if you purchase the guide by this Friday. Uh, again, this is for you and your executive. And, and it's a great tool for you that I'm helping you talk to them. And also we have a button, the bundles, a special, if you go to the website too, if you look for the guide, if you do not, if your executive does not have the edge, this is for them and how to better utilize you and build that partnership with you. So it's discount code EA20 for 20% discount. The other things I didn't tell you about the guide I cover resolving partnership problems. There is a partnership essentials section. So it includes the proprietary assessments I use in my coaching and consulting. And that's to help stimulate the dialogue between the two of you so you can get on the same page. Um, there's advice to the executives from me and so forth. So it's, it's just packed. Okay, do I have time to, um, uh, I do want to, I talked about the Zoom really quick, April 17th, mark your calendar, it'll be the last webinar that we'll do this month, 
uh, for you. And that's going to be a great one about being proactive and the difference between initiative. And June 12 and 13 is our annual Enlightened live virtual training event. All right. Now I think I have to stay on an extra five minutes on top of what we have because I took up all the time talking. <laughs> but it was really important. I had a lot to share with you folks. So do we have a few questions that I will try to answer? Yes. Okay. So let's see. Laura is saying, after six years, my leader is finally desperate enough to give me access to his email inbox. What can I do with his emails to help him to help him with those? Sorry. Oh, wow. That, I, it's a great question. And I, I will try to be concise because it's really a lengthier answer. But um, to help with him, he's given you access. I would say one thing, if you've got to start reading those and try to understand the context of what the email is about and especially look for action items within those emails that maybe you can assist with or you can capture and make sure that your executive doesn't miss those action items. Um, clarify with your executive what types of emails they don't want to see that you can maybe start deleting for them or you can start automatically filing into certain folders. Um, so you, there's different degrees of email management involvement and we do talk about that in the guide. So it could be low level or it could be very high level. And I would also have that discussion. But start by understanding, you know, as best you can. And then you may need to ask your executive to explain something as you just kind of learn and grow in this process so you can be more effective. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, let's see. Do you have any suggestions of how to ask your leader to relinquish some responsibilities? Yeah, tell them to let it go already. <laughs> No, see, if I was there, I could do that. <laughs> uh, there's a couple different ways. One, I always say, it goes back to communication. Um, have you really had a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with your executive? And getting them to see the benefits of relinquishing some of those responsibilities. Um, I know in, in the book we wrote for executives, we have an entire chapter on delegation and a lot of things hold them back from delegating. So one, having the direct conversation, but pointing out the benefits and what's the value that you can bring and how you save time for them if, you, if they would delegate. And then the other part is I would uh, just lean in. In other words, not waiting to be asked, but maybe really paying attention to what's going on and and taking the initiative on that maybe before they even get started on it so they start to demonstrate and show the value that you can bring it helps as well so that's the short answer okay uh this person um supports four executives and wants to know is it all right to try to forge a strategic partnership with one executive and less so with the other three yeah, that's an awesome question. I love it because in my career, I had to support a direct, the general manager, the, the top dog, and then four other department managers. And um, so, and I, we also do this in our coaching work when an assistant supports multiple people. Uh, so one, yes, if there is a person who is the key or main executive, um, that's who you would want to build more of a strategic partnership with. Obviously, you can't do them do that with all of them, but you can touch base and support them, correct? I don't know if there's any hierarchy in titles because typically that's going to dictate who gets the most support. If they're equal, like we've run into this situation, if they're equal, it goes by the work that executive or leader um, needs. So if we have three people you're supporting, let's say, and they're pretty much on the same level, it might be one gets 30% of your time, one gets 20% of your time, and the other one gets 50%. So again, those are uh, 
things for you to think about. Is there a hierarchy involved? Are the title wise? If they're equal, then you need it gets to the work. Who most needs your support? And yes, you work on that partnership with the key person. Excellent question. Yes. Thank you. Okay. And um, I know people are going to have to leave, so let's try one more. Okay, um, I will be getting a new executive in the coming months. Would it be appropriate to contact their previous assistants to find out their likes, dislikes, how they start their day, et cetera? Uh, I think that is a good idea, you know, to learn what you can. And then also in my first week of meeting with that person, I would directly ask them. You know, what do you find to be of most value in the way of your assistance supporting you? And I would also ask, what are your five or seven top pet peeves? Always ask, what are your pet peeves? What drives you crazy? Because the other assistant may not even know what drove them crazy because they don't say anything. So yes, get as much as you can background and then have your own conversation. So you're having that direct conversation. And it also gives you a chance to let them know that you truly want to start this relationship uh, on a good ground and good grounding. And that's also where you should get the guide so the two of you could immediately start discussing these processes and you know start it off uh, where you're not struggling and waiting weeks and weeks and months to figure it all out. And good luck to you. Um, so, so I, I want, quickly, Joan, on the guide, um, somebody was asking, and I'm sure other people are curious, does it require both the executive and the assistant to have a copy of the guide to work through it? You, you don't have to. Some do because the assistants want to keep their own and refer to it and make their own notes. And I know a CEO here in town. I've been coaching her and her uh, assistant. She keeps it right on the corner of her desk and they refer to it often. Um, and so that's the deal, you know, figure that out. Um, if not, uh, it's for then both of you would still want to go through it. So what I recommend when I'm doing the coaching work, and this is what we use actually when I go on site, um, is that I suggest you just take a section or a, a, a chapter at a time. So for example, we would first talk about the people part. Here's what Joan's suggesting. Here's the advice, the best practices and discuss those. But then when you get into processes, we would do one at a time. So like, let's say next week, my executive and I, we would read about and discuss what we think about you being the information flow manager. And then, um, and then the next week, then talk about the daily and reoccurring huddles and get those solid, agree on you know, the process and how you're going to implement these and give yourself time. Maybe you wait two weeks before you go on to the next chapter. So you've got to build this foundation because you're, you are trying to incorporate new habits and new behaviors that maybe neither of you have had before or have done or not to the depth of what I'm recommending. And that takes time to make those changes. So you don't want to dump it all on, on at once. Think of a, a very, tall, strong, solid building, right? It's a foundation, you know, they're built a floor at a time, right? Um, the other idea I do have though, what, what I have suggested, you might look at the, the 10 top areas of processes and say, this is where we are struggling the most and go to that chapter first and then go to the next and so forth. So you can go out of order. Are there any questions about the guide itself while I am on? Um, the other chapters I meant to tell you quickly, sorry. Um, 
And again, how I came up with this was, again, after many, many years of telling executive and assistants the same processes, it didn't matter what industry they worked in. It didn't matter how big the company was or not. I kept saying the same thing over and over and over. So um, we also have email management as a chapter, prioritization and assessing value, a chapter to discuss project management, chapter on travel, um, speaking. In other words, when you're having to represent your executive through communication and also follow-up systems comes up all the time, all the time. So we have a chapter on that. Uh, not, any, um, I know I want to help everyone so much. Um, I have one quote I want to share, and then I'll take one more question, but I love this. In the dance of executive and assistant partnerships, success is not led by one, but choreographed by both. Together, they turn strategy into symphony. So my hope, my wish for you in honor of your month is that truly you could build those stronger, more productive, less stressful, you know, partnerships. Um, and because that's where a lot of your deep down gifts will shine when you dig deep and you're able to build those relationships, you're going to shine even more than you shine today. So I wish you the very best. All right. I know we have to say bye. One more. I did say one more question. Malia, do you have a uh, one? Kathy wants to know if you have any ideas, if you have ideas on how to be a funnel when you have resistance. Oh, boy. Um, just hire me to coach your executives. On <laughs> it's no, it's just that difficult. It really is. But I, again, I just go back to keep communicating in various ways the value. But what I also would say, if I were the assistant, I would explain to my executive, the more you bring me into the loop, the more I understand, and you say it like I'm saying it, I mean, truly, not like, well, it would be really nice if you would include me, you know, in what's going on. I mean, you've got to sell it and get them to see that the more they bring you in, the better you will be able to support them, the more productive they will be. You will be able to be more proactive. You will be able to take the initiative. You've got to hit them hard. I mean, it's what I do, but obviously you're going to not say it exactly, maybe as direct as I would, but you've got to say it with confidence. You've got to be assertive. You say it with conviction. And I did that as an assistant in my early 20s, but it's only because one of my executives taught me in my early ages the value that I brought and I was a partner. And so it was easier for me to live that out the rest of my career. So I love you all. I hope you have an awesome day. I hope you join us. If you can, Thursday, we're going to do the question and answer. So you could, if you didn't get to ask me your question today, you can maybe ask it uh, in that event. And that's it. I need to sign off and let you go get back to work. <laughs> Bye. Bye.